breakfast puppies? Welcome to Have Movies Will Game, the only podcast on the globe where we take you, our friendly listener, through the best and worst movies of yesterday and today, and then discuss ways that you can play them at your gaming table. In every episode, our intrepid hosts, Matthew, Dusty, and Nathaniel, will filibuster fondly over facts and feelings of your favorite films, and then get to the glorious gaming goodness, giving Game Masters great gimmicks on generating golden genius. Have Movies Will Game, brought to you through the electronic wonder of the internet. Now, let's start the show! It is by will alone I set my mind in motion. It is by the juice of Sappho that thoughts acquire speed, the lips acquire stains, and the stains become a warning. It is by will alone I set my mind in motion. Welcome to Half Movies, Will Game. I'm so excited! Dune! You guys, y'all are more a lot more excited than me about this movie. Yeah, you like Valerian. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This yeah. is in the same vein. Yeah, yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Matthew. <laughs> and I'm Dusty. And I am Nathaniel. And we are doing Dune this week. Um, Nathaniel grabbed the intro, and that is his right. But <laughs> yeah. he, has, he has Dune stuff tattooed on his arms. I have the arms. tattoos, goddammit. However, this is... Uh, it's, it's hard to say if this is my favorite series of books. It's in my top three. Yeah. Yeah. It's in there for me too. Yeah. yeah and, and and just in case anyone listening which version we're we're talking about, we are talking about the 1984 version of Dune, not the Sci-Fi Channel. Which I believe would technically be classified as a TV show. Well, yeah, the we, sci-fi we do one. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. sci-fi one was a mini series. Like if I if we ever break that rule, it's going to be for Band of Brothers. Farscape motherfucker. Yeah, Ooh. Farscape. <laughs> yes. If we're doing one, we're doing the other. I can yeah. go either way. <laughs> But um, crackers don't matter. <laughs> Need more height. <laughs> so which which version did you guys watch? Because there are like three versions of this movie. There's the theatrical version, which I watched. There's the David Lynch cut, which is like 190 minutes, and then there's the in between version, Today, which is like I 160 the, minutes. Uh, the almost three hour director's cut. Okay. So that's not the one that I watched today. I just watched the regular Oh, that's theatrical. fine. I can literally quote yours from start to finish. Yeah, Matthew and I watched the same one because he watched this one off of my media server. Okay. Which is, you know, okay, you mentioned the TV show. Mm-hmm. And we've mentioned the books, and we're talking about the movie. Should we plug Plex real fast? <laughs> Probably. Because I fucking love Probably, Plex, yeah. I, they should sponsor us. <laughs> Plex, Plex, thank you. Yes, thank you, Plex. You, you've made it so we can do this podcast. Well, the only reason I didn't watch what was up, what you had up on the media server was because I thought we were watching the theatrical version. So it wasn't until I got into our dev chat that it was like, oh, they're watching a different version. It's well, okay. I'm halfway through. You know, fuck it. Yeah. You were saying, sorry. I have seen... The movie, the shows, and read the books so many times that they have all just blurred together in my in my psyche, and they've become something of what I consider like an Erdun. That oh yeah yeah no I get exactly all the what best you're features of them. Sometimes when I'm reading the book, I'm like, that's not how it's supposed. To. Oh yeah. Oh wait, yeah. they don't because I really liked, for example, the Sonics. I love the Sonic attacks of mm-hmm. the movie. But I also love the weirding the, modules. I know what the fuck. It was so not in the book, but it was cool. But yeah, that this was. I I, I consider myself, you know, in in the film industry because I'm sad and I have pretensions. But <laughs> oh, I think um, we all. Do. I think we're all there. <laughs> but we do a podcast about mm-hmm. films. I think we're. Yeah, not I, you know, I do, we're I do a little industry. work and in, you know in the industry. But I would not know how to tackle that. And I honestly, I think he did the the good choice instead of spending. Three or four hours discussing the politics of the Landsrad, he had to give a reason why the Atreides were destabilizing the Emperor's position. And he's like, they have a new super weapon. That's what we're going to use. Whereas in the book, it's just, he's popular now. Yeah. Yeah. And I he's mean, he's popular and we don't like that. Yeah. So we're going to fuck him. <laughs> I mean, it's, I, I see why they went with the choice, though. And I like it. It's a good choice. A new technique involving sound. Yeah. It, it worked for a storytelling technique. Yeah. I would not have ever touched Dune. No, I don't know. Too much. Dune. I, I, I know my limits. I'm not qualified. Even the book is difficult to read if you're used to more popular styles of writing. Like, there are no perspective chapters in Dune. 
it is a classic from the 60s. Mm-hmm. When 19, writing 64, 65. Yeah, writing was just different. You're reading the book mid-section. Well, first off, I don't think there are any chapters at all. There's just sections, and each section is led with a bit of history told from... God, and I love those. The Princess Irula. Yeah. Well, the history is always good. I, I like stories of how they, they bring in a lot no, of history. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's not just scattered through. There are these very quotable things at the beginning of each chapter. Each chapter, yeah. Which are fantastic and thought-provoking and just brilliant. But it doesn't switch on a chapter level between characters. No. In the middle of text, one character, you know, Paul will look at his mom and like, Paul's like, I wonder what my mom is thinking right now. And it looks over at his mom and mom's like, I bet Paul is wondering what I'm thinking right now. <laughs> <laughs> you like, wait, but if you are used to more modern fiction, more mm-hmm. modern popular fantasy and science fiction, you're probably used to a more constrained point of view. Yeah. Dune doesn't do that, which is why I'm making a movie about Dune with all of that voiceover. And Which mostly happens in their heads. Yeah, yeah, all of that internal monologue. The book is internal monologue. It is a grand epic of internal monologue. I, I just don't know how a director, and, and I, I like Lynch. I like the things. He, visually, he's a, he's a good director. He's a great director. I just don't know how any director can, a few years prior to this, there was, there was Star Wars. You know, Star Wars had come out a few years prior to this, you know, what, four, seven years prior to this. And look at this and go, I'm going to I'm going to be the antithesis of everything that is Star Wars. And I'm going to go ahead and make this and try to wring something out that is like the book and not be anywhere close, in my opinion. Are you high? (laughs) Probably. I mean, like the movie. Star Wars? No. No, it is the antithesis. I'm not saying it's like Star Wars. I mean, it's the that's what antithesis means. It means no. The I, I, I get of that, but I not. don't think that was anywhere in David Lynch's <laughs> thought process. I don't. I don't know. It just. I just don't know how it's anyone David can look at this Lynch, and go, The man is a madman, and go t- can take Dune and go. I'm gonna squeeze blood from a stone and turn it into a fantastic movie. But he did. No, he didn't. Go on. It's not that good. Well, gosh, Dusty, what didn't you like about it? <laughs> the cuts were horrible, in my opinion. And I remember, I okay, so for, well, me, what do you mean by that? Hang on, let me let me preface this by this. Oh movie, no, 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 no! What do you mean by hang cuts? on? Hang on, this movie does have a gigantic piece of childhood nostalgia for me because I went to go see this with my dad, and he loved this movie. It, it, it sounds it, like a man of good taste. I don't know why. <laughs> My mother and I were talking about this earlier today. She's like, what movie are you guys recording? I'm like, dude. She's like, oh, fuck. Why did you guys do that movie? And I was like, because my co-hosts love this movie and they love the books. And she's like, yeah, but your dad loved it too. But the movie is horrible. And she's like, I'm not into sci-fi. And I'm like, yeah, I know. It's not that good of a movie. That being said, the cuts are horrible. The soundtrack okay, okay, is okay, great. Okay, okay. What didn't you like about them? The pacing of the cuts. It was like almost in the in like mid thought midstream they'd cut to another to another sequence and i did remember, you're making this up no i'm not i watched i watched the theatrical version that i'm fully i conversant know with whoa, it. i know <laughs> so what what fight, where, fight, sh- fight, tell me apart fight, the three of fight fight fight, <laughs> fight fight um let's see the there was the entire scene with gurney and the 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 shield fighting that mm-hmm. seemed like it was cut there was too much cut out of it there could have i felt like there was a lot more that was there the so you you wanted to be in the mood mm. in the mood in the mood <laughs> a mood's a thing for cattle and love play not fighting <laughs> it was great to see him take that character into into star trek the next generation well his hair was trimmed keep going yeah, it, you know, I, I disagree. The, the no, cuts can, were fine. That, 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 it's just how I feel. I'm sorry. I just felt Your like feelings it was are like wrong, Dusty. all over. Like the movie was all over the place. Like it was an amateur fucking hour. I'm sorry. <laughs> David Lynch, if you're listening. No, we do not support Dusty. <laughs> Lynch has said he has even taken his name off of a lot of, of, of these cuts. He doesn't want anything to do with it because he was like total control was taken away from him during the, the editing process. You did notice that it was is, an yeah. Alan Smithy movie. Yes. Yeah. With, uh, is that how you say that? Smithy? Yeah. Smithy. Written by Judas Booth. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. a pseudonym when people don't want anything to do with that movie anymore. So, because the production companies were like, we want this, we want that. If you want to go into the history, Dune, this was a rough one. There is another yeah. Dune, which never happened, 
Oh, would have been cool if it Yes. Oh, um, however, this is still a masterful movie. The cuts are fine. How would you have adapted the book? I wouldn't have. I, I would not have even attacked. Yeah. Dune is like Led Zeppelin. You do not. You do <laughs> you not cover. It. You don't touch it. <laughs> like most Led Zeppelin, you do not. You don't cover it in a mainstream way. Dune is one of those books. Now, granted, I haven't read it in a very long time. You don't redo. So you have sacred cows, is what you're saying. Things that are just beyond the reach of mortal men and shall not be infringed upon. A couple things, but you didn't like the book. So what do you care? I didn't say I didn't like the you book. You did before we went live. <laughs> it's not one of my guys. <laughs> he doesn't like the book. Get him. <laughs> it's not one of. It's not in my anywhere near my top twenty. You know, this to me, the it's movie, a difficult read. It is a slow, it's, it's difficult, a difficult read, read because There's, it was written in the Heinlein is easier to read, in my opinion. Than, yeah, but Heinlein was writing for money. This is true, and he admits that freely. No, I know that yeah. he's like with Dune. I feel that. The movie is not excellent. It is fantastic to me. Oh, yeah. But watching it over the last few days, I saw the flaws. There were many flaws. I think the pacing could have been a little bit different. And if I had made Dune into a movie, first off, I wouldn't have made it into a movie. I would have made it into a TV show. I think it could be redone today. Oh, by the same people, for example, who do uh, The Expanse or Altered Carbon. I think it could be redone today with our modern abilities. I think somebody should do it. But I think the movie, or like the book, despite its flaws, I think of the movie as like, okay, this is, I'm sorry, this is going to sound insulting. I think of it as a thinking man science fiction movie. Oh, it very oh I can agree is. with that. Yeah. Yeah. There's, well, I don't think it's, I'm surprised Dusty I don't, here doesn't like it. I, the action doesn't start until an hour and 55 I'm, minutes. I, I'm fine the, with that. I'm totally that fine with watch. the action not beginning yeah. for a long period of time. I just, I think my dislike for a lot of it is the technical aspect. Just camera play, cutting, fully. A lot of it was just the Foley pure. Was amazing. Not, oh, some what, of it was bad. What? what? The sets were amazing, and the costumes. Fuck sakes, dear God! <laughs> oh, oh my God! The costumes, the sets, the pack of Eagles Bulldogs at the beginning. Yeah, I mean, come okay. on! That, that, yeah, that <laughs> was everything. In that gold. was nice to see. Like in the year ten thousand, there's at least you know bulldogs still around. That was and kind of awesome. Lynch still had his touches here and there. Like mm -hmm. he came up with the mint hat mm -hmm. mantra, and he put those. Okay. <laughs> Visually cool, but narratively stupid heart plugs into the Harkonnens. Yeah. What the now, hell? What I, I like that. What I did <laughs> love, just the look of, so, some of the things I really did like, though, the look of the, the just the worms in general. The, those were beautiful. Iconic. Yes. yes. I the will fully suits, admit that those are awesome. The still um, suits were amazing. I want one. The, yes, the, still the, the, still the suits were great. Benny Gesserit. Yes. Um, yeah. Jessica's fucking cloak. That is a badass future cloak. Oh, yeah. Although I will say that in the book, the uh, Reverend Mohayim, uh, the Helen Gaius Helen, Mohayim, Helen Gaius Mohayim looks mm -hmm. nothing like her description. Yeah. It's nothing like the David Lynch version. Yeah. She needed way more beak. Way, she needed way more hair. And way more beak. Yeah. Like she had a huge, like. And she was also large. Huge nose. In yeah. The book. Yeah. Circling back around where you say redo it today, do you know that Villain Vu. Villain Vu is doing Dune. I don't know that word. That uh, that's said. director Villeneuve. Uh, he did Arrival, and he did uh, the new Blade Runner that came out, uh, 2049. That director is redoing I'd be Dune. I'd interested in seeing it. And he's already said he, that, that one book, he's cutting it into two movies to give it to give it actual, like, hey. I don't want movies, though. I do. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> but it's it's, on, it's it's already going into pre-production. Okay, so. right. well, I, mean, I, I really, see it. I really I'll see liked it. the sci-fi <laughs> one. I just, I thought, after the amazing costumes and sets of this movie, that whoever did the costumes and sets for the sci-fi channel should be dragged out into the street and beaten with large 28-inch <laughs> double-ended dildos. And yet it was more <laughs> faithful to the story. Oh, it was. Yeah. It was. The The writing was, was more. But, I mean, in order to cram it all into a movie, cuts had to be made, you know? So much of this movie's writing was directly from the book. Yeah. Most of the dialogue was word for word, except when they took artistic license and made stuff up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But most of it was word for word. See, it's it's been probably 25 years, at least, since I've read the book. Okay. So it's been like three weeks. Sidetrack. <laughs> we have been talking about the Harkonnens. Mm -hmm. 
honestly, Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, <laughs> who that, will encompass your doom. That guy was the most versatile and talented actor in that entire movie. Oh yeah, he was he, great. Over Max von Sydow. Oh yeah, but well, Max von Sydow Cy- didn't didn't Cy-Dow have a. Didn't, I always say Sydow. I always say Sydow, but I, don't I know. think it's Sydow. I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead. But he wasn't even really in it that much. That's true. And. I, and he, Half of his stuff was voiceover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the uh, Baron, the Baron that, owned every moment. And even from his facial expression, mm-hmm. from the way he delivered his lines, it was Everyone like, did excellent, which is why I don't understand why Dusty doesn't like it. Watch oh, the Baron. The, uh, Jessica's okay, coming the, in to see her whoa, maybe dead on. son. The Baron, and the the Baron in the this door. movie so was good. like was like Obi Wan was like out Guinness in Star Wars. Like he was just acting circles around everyone there. Oh yeah, Kenneth McMillan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't think he was acting circles. I think there was a ton was of great actors him. there. Everyone no, the, was the cast was great. There was, like I said, most of my problem, ninety five percent of my problem with the movie is all on like the technical side. The cast was great. The they did extremely well. The costuming was amazing. The set design was great. I just there's too much like with the cutting and the pacing. And unfortunately, the graphics for the time. I mean, they were great for the time. Yeah, but I mean that that's it's a just, time thing. It's difficult to watch now for me. I, I thought the battles were actually awful. Yeah, I can agree with that. That first battle where the Harkonnens raid. I this like, is oh, this God, is the first this, time I've care. watched this yeah. on a true HD 1080p display. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it it was a little rough. It was it was tough. It really but was. My yeah. love pulled me through, but. For me, what saved that first battle with the Harkonnens for me was Gurney Halleck coming out of the battle with the pug troops holding a pug. Oh my god, that was great! Long live Duke Leto! I and I I will admit, I when 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 Ah! (laughs) he was an old man in that movie. He he was born an old man. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um. I forgot. <laughs> Patrick he, Stewart. No, he, when he went into TNG, he was in his like mid thirties. So that really? was really that was only four years prior to this. So he was 30s. like thirty. Yeah, in TNG. Yeah. No. Yes. He looks like an old man in TNG too, and he still looks like an old man. <laughs> he doesn't look like he's aged a bit to me. <laughs> See, I, I I think Patrick Stewart is a vampire. <laughs> I would believe it, like an Anne Rice yeah. vampire. Okay, so excuse me. He w- he was in he was he was forty four at the time of Dune. Still. Okay, I can, so Dune? that would he yeah, still looks forty four. He was, he was four, yeah. He was, he was born in nineteen forty, so he was right. forty four at the time of Dune. So that would have put him about forty seven around TNG. Jesus, you know, what is he now, guys? I was just about to He's say seventy seven. I was just about to say something terrible, and that was going to be man. I would love to see him and Ian McKellen do a movie together. Oh, and then I remembered. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oops. Ooh. Ah. Uh, so, anyway, I will admit when when he when Paul, Patrick Stewart's character and uh, Paul Atreides. That was when, a touching moment. Yeah, when they when they re when they reconnected yeah. the, the, the battle. You yeah, and he pup. had the longer hair. He had the the, the skullet. <laughs> the skullet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's the only man who can rock a skullet. Take note, this, America. This there was, is one man who yeah. can wear a skullet, and you are not him. This was Patrick uh, Kyle McLaughlin's first movie. Yeah, and he knocked it out of the fucking park. How old is Paul Atreides in the book? I 15, forget. Fifteen. Yeah. So. Okay. Now this is this is a classic trope too, uh, the losing of the father. Mm-hmm. Incidentally, the father, Leto, Duke Leto Atreides, um, is that the captain from Das Boot? Yes, it is. It looks just yeah. like him. Okay, it's him. Yep, that is Jurgen Prock now. Yep. Okay, I don't recognize the name, but I always thought I think that's him. The moment you see him, you're like, I know that guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he talks. You're like, Das Boot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, also another great movie. Uh, he's been in a number of, of movies that you may have seen, like The English Patient, Das Boot, uh, and The Seventh Sign from 1988. I thought his acting was incredible. If I had the facial intensity of that man, I would be president of the United States of America. I, as a kid, when I went to see this movie, I always thought that Jurgen Prochnow uh, playing Duke Leto and the guy Everett McGill that played Stilgar mm-hmm. were the same person yeah. as a kid. He's he's way whiter. He's no, I, I know, but they, they they kind of have a similar facial expression. They have, and they're well. That's why in the book Jessica briefly considers, uh, you know, getting with Stilgar too. I don't remember that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't remember pretty much anything of the book. It was like twenty, almost twenty five. It's years okay. Ago. You, d- you didn't like the book much. Yeah, which is the thing. I give you something you're not going to like. 
<laughs> Your reading preferences. <laughs> One thing. <laughs> One well, th- well played, <laughs> well played. One thing I will note of the movie version that Matthew and I watched, mm-hmm. I lamented the downplayed role that Princess Aruland played in that one. Agreed, because she yeah. is the chronicler of the series. Well, I, and, I, 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 she is his chronicler yeah. when he puts her aside for Chani. Yeah, that's how she found comfort was writing these histories. Yeah, so. I, I remember a number of years ago, I I went over to my parents' place and and Sci Fi was playing the longer version, so it was like you know a six hour day because there are commercials and everything, but it had the animation, and I had noticed that there was a much uh, more focus on the chronicler. Now, in the version that you watched. Does she play more of a part through the movie? Does no. she? Okay. She's, no. she's you barely see her at the beginning, mm-hmm. like one scene in the middle, and then at the end, yeah. and that's it. It was actually really disappointing. And she's mm-hmm. so hot. That close up on her face at the beginning, where she fades in from the star field, yeah. and she's just looking at you through the camera, and she goes, "A beginning is a very delicate time." And like eight year old Matt goes, "Is there something wrong with my pants? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on?" I, I lament that they cut that from that <laughs> yeah. version. Because it was really awesome. She is a really fascinating character in the book. And too. I just, and allow me to be petty for a second, classically beautiful in oh, her yeah. bone structure. Just, no, I agree with that completely. <laughs> <laughs> but they had a pack of English Bulldogs, guys. Yeah. yeah. It's oh nice. God. Like I said, I, I never it's noticed nice that. See. As a child, I wondered what happened to the dog, right? Mm-hmm. But I hadn't seen the director's cut. Now, today, when I watched it, at the fight at the end with Fade Rautha, He's got uh, the, 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 the No, the kids uh, of yeah. the guy, uh, which I liked, that's also included yeah. in this yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. They're basically Paul's other family. Family. Yeah. And he has responsibility yeah. to him. But one of them has the bulldog. Yep. And I was really excited yeah. by that. The pug. Yeah. Yeah, the pug. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Small dog can't breathe. <laughs> dog. <laughs> okay. Dusty. Yes. What are the things that you did like about the movie? I like the set design. What about it? Tell me about it. It was influential. Uh, you can see movies like Dark City that took a lot from that, in my opinion. Okay. It was grandiose, which I also really liked. I like... I love the Baroque. Just yes. the gold leaf everywhere. Yeah, the, the gold was a little too much, but I did like it. There was too much gold, in my opinion. I've, I've been to an actual palace mm-hmm. uh, on tours and stuff. That's a thing. That is a thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've I'm Podunk. I've never left the United States, so just I mean, Trump Hotel. It's that, the same kind of thing. It's it's styled oh. after it. It one, is one thing I really liked were the external shots of the city. Yeah, the models, the, the models. Yeah, shots. the models were very detailed. Yeah. in the same because initially I'm blanking on his name. Um, Alien, Blade Runner. Why am I Ridley? Scott, thank you. Was 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 slated to do this? Dagger. What? Ridley Scott or H.R. Geiger? Ridley Both. Scott? Yeah. Well, H.R. Geiger was set to do the, the set designs, and Ridley Scott was supposed to write and direct, and they he kind now of that bombed out of that. Fascinating. Yeah. He his brother Didn't they keep some of his, his work yeah they, like they kept some sand? of it his yeah. his apparently his brother had passed away, and he's like I can't do this. This is going to be like two to three years more production time, and I don't have it in me. So, Lynchy, it's it's all yours. Take it away and go. Which with is it. how he's known in the industry. Exactly, Lynchy. Uh, ex- <laughs> um, <laughs> prior to that, uh, actually, Jodorowsky uh, was going to set it up with uh, Pink Floyd and Magma doing the score. Oh, uh, let's talk about Toto for a second. Yeah, I yeah, I was wondering if yeah. we were going to get that. Holy shit! From Rosanna to this, uh-huh. all I want to do when I wake up in the morning is see your eyes. I to this, the rain, I miss the rains down Rosanna. in Africa. Yes. Oh, yeah. They should have closed <laughs> with that. <laughs> I miss the rains down on Arrakis. I bless the rains. So here's, here's, some, here's some notes, actually. So initially, uh, Dan O'Bannon. Oh, my was, God. That would have been amazing. I know. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, Dustin. It's okay. Dan O'Bannon with the was. the triangular the, drums. I hear the drums. Oh, <laughs> those drums were awesome. <laughs> Dan O'Bannon was set to do all the visual effects. And H.R. Geiger. Uh, Jean, <laughs> I really wanted to interrupt him again for like the fifth time. But I didn't. I hate you guys. <laughs> Screw you guys. I'm going home. Here, take my cookies and go home. You have cookies? No, I, I have cider today. Oh. Anyway, Dan O'Bannon. Yes, Dan O'Bannon 
who was going to do the visual effects, H.R. Geiger, John Gerard, and Chris Foss were set up to do the character design. Jodorowsky had envisioned, check this out, Salvador Dali as the Emperor, uh, Orson Welles as Baron Harkonnen, which would have been kind of cool. No. Mick Jagger as Fade. Ew, no. Udo, Udo Kier as uh, Peter. Who? Piter. Uh, Piter. No, who? No. And I don't know him. Uh, David Carradine as Leto. And that might have been okay. That would have been okay. And Jer and uh, uh, Jodorowsky's kid, who was 12 years old at the time and had starred in uh, El Topo, was going to play uh, Paul. No. Kyle McLaughlin, now and forever. No. Yeah. If you're going to do a movie like this and you're going to alter the age, you always want to alter up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, Game of Thrones has proved this. It's always easier to alter a teenager a few years older than it yeah. is to lower them. But it all. Because then otherwise you end up with those oddities where well actually this is kind of the opposite wizard of oz Mm -hmm. you know yeah wizard of oz judy garland is playing a character that was written for shirley temple so you're like oh that's why this character acts like a nine-year-old because it was written for a (laughs) nine-year-old Uh, and then uh, everybody kind of, Jodorowsky kind of went to crap on everything. Ridley didn't want, Ridley Scott didn't want to do anything. So in 81, executive producer Dino De Laurentiis uh, hired Lynch as the director, and you've got what you have. Right. With Toto. I am the shout out Mapes, the housekeeper. I love that character too. And another note, David Lynch had turned down the chance to direct uh, Return of the Jedi to do this. Oh, good. He, he shouldn't have had anything he was, to do with return of the job yeah yeah he, no, really he apparently not, told, not his area he apparently told told george lucas quote it's your thing man it's not my thing yeah quote no I, and i agree that's that's a good call yeah yeah no i do not want lynch touching the star wars saga no any any part of it no yeah. no <laughs> it's, it's it's like this oil and water that they should not be <laughs> yeah no you know there'd probably be some jedi scene with a lot of drugs involved and but likewise, Something. likewise, I do not want George or JJ touching Dune. No, God, no. JJ Abrams, keep your filthy paws off Dune. I have what's with the, the hate with JJ? I have loved Wait, some things that JJ has done. Wh- what's but. what's with the hate? Yeah. Did you see the motorcycle scene in the new Star Trek? Yeah, I did. I didn't yeah, like that. Th- there you go. That, do, do I need to say anything else? That almost does makes not want, make the makes entire movie horrible. Actually, it does. It's what's wrong with it. <laughs> Thank you. Because I, that's me. how I feel with well, Dune. Some other time. Let me talk about Star Trek. I haven't seen it. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, completely out of context <laughs> stuff. What was out of context in Dune? Did he throw in a, a nice, like, uh, diner scene or something? No? Okay, you got yeah, me. On yeah, yeah, I one. do. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so, the, you know, did any of you catch the current and previous and past political analogs? As oh, in, this is really just an analog for the Persian Gulf conflict. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, he goes into a uh, hydraulic uh, nepot- despotism uh-huh. a lot in his books. And that's where someone controls a, a, a commodity that's necessary for for life. And in this case, it was, you know, spice. Mm-hmm. But uh, in the past, even here on Earth, it's been water, oil, sugar, a number of things. And uh yeah, I mean the 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 books on Dune are in, like incredibly smart, and I don't understand why you don't like them. Like I said, like twenty five years ago, I read the books. Well, throw out all the shitty modern crap and go back and read it, man. <laughs> you can I read will. the first book in like Give me the book two days. I will pass this on to you. No, I have copies of it. Okay. I just wanted to you see can it. Real read quick. it in like two days. Yeah, I know it's a quick read. Yeah, it the the chapters heretics belong. not so much. Yeah. Chapter house not so much. I heard I, you need the first three. That's Dune, a, Messiah, and Children. And that's like a good I, saga right I, where's there. Where's God Emperor? Is that the fourth? That's that's the fourth. Okay. Yeah. Which is one of my favorites. I love God Emperor of Dune. Isn't that where Herbert I, was getting really sick and he kind of went like nope. way off on a limb? That's Heretics no. was his yeah, last Heretics. one. Okay. Because I think it's... Uh, and that's God the Emperor, one his fucking child the murdered the end of. And then Heretics. Heretics. So those first six. So good. I brought two series of books with me for four years on the Bering Sea. The Lord of the Rings trilogy with the Silmarillion Unfinished Tales and the six Dune books. And I have read them, oh God, hundreds of times. These are books that that I will treasure for the rest of my life. And they are just some of the the highest examples of what literature can and should be. And it worries me that you don't like them. Especially since your stated purpose is to be an author. 
25 years, again, that I haven't read this book. It disturbs me that you don't like it. I also don't really like Lord of the Rings that much. Oh, my God. Because it's dry. That's the only reason I don't like it. You're not a child, Dusty. You don't require entertainment and explosions every five minutes. I, You're a grown-ass man. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no I, I, I do like Lord of the Rings, but it's just it's so fucking dry to me. It's just dry. This is dry, too, but it's good, and it makes no, me think. I, I, I didn't say that Lord of the Rings wasn't good. Besides, Lord of the Rings is like a tone piece. It's like, let us discuss what forest feels like. Let us discuss what walking feels like. Let us discuss what underground feels like. It's it's now like let's in, just sing a song about all four of those things. <laughs> it's like in, in it's, it's like in in um one of the Game of Thrones books. Fucking Martin goes on this ten page long tirade about mead. Do you like Game of Thrones? Well, first off, the we're books? not talking about the Game of Thrones. No, I know. I'm just using that as an example. Just out of curiosity, yeah. though, do you like the Game of Thrones books? Because I haven't read I all of them. Horrible. Track. I haven't read all of them. Because they are I have designed this thing, for airlines. I have this thing that I <laughs> I don't like getting into a series until all the books are out because I don't want to be left hanging for like two to nine years. Good luck. Yeah, I know. That. That's why I never read the the Wheel of Time series because it wasn't out. It's mm. and then I heard it was basically just Lord of the Rings. So, so. anyway, back to Dude. Yeah, yeah back I, to Dude. I, I, did anyone else? think jessica getting the gag out of her mouth was one of the hottest things ever that was one of the hottest <laughs> yeah fucking that, and that was, was yeah yeah fully sorry that was <laughs> that was some fantastic yeah. fully well, just like, not just well okay first off <sighs> i didn't say all of it when was they bad. reveal how deep the gag goes i was just like oh i have that <laughs> <laughs> i did not remember that from it was a pretty youth. deep gag yeah, yeah. that's good then stuff I paused the movie and went looked at my trunk and thought yeah boy yeah. <laughs> That's how it started. <laughs> yeah, so you, you, you find a, the root a lot of everything. Of, a lot of uh, formative Matthew can be found in this. Probably too much. Let's not examine I that too loved, closely. I loved Jessica's hair and the way oh, it yeah. changed oh, throughout the movie. Great. I love how she held yeah. herself. The woman is a magnificent oh, yeah. actress. Mm -hmm. And her at the end, mm -hmm. where she's on like full on Reverend Mother. Yeah, outfit. where she's straight up Benny Jesuit. Like, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. That transition that you don't get to see happen until at the end, it's suddenly, boom, by the way, I'm awesome. Or yeah. the fucking little girl. Oh, oh yeah. His little, the little sister that. Saint Ali of the knife. She was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, by the way, if I had the power of the voice, there's a mm hundred -hmm. percent chance I would misuse it. Oh, yeah. Same here. I mean, there's just there's like if no way I have the ethics or the self control to not misuse that. Yeah. Just like if, 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 you know, the force were a thing, I would totally use it for opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, this movie did fail, though, at the box office. Uh, it had a $40 million production cost, which in the early 1980s, that was a massive amount of, of dollars to be spent for a movie. And the U.S. return was only $30.9 million. Mm. And the international was $182,000, apparently. Oh, really? Yeah, apparently. Huh. From what my notes show. Ouch. Yeah. It's I, a thinking man's movie. Yeah. This is not a movie for the Star Wars crowd. Yeah. No, it's no I get really that. Not. As you stare at me. Yeah, Especially it's not a thinking the man's movie, version. Dusty. I, I love thinking man's movies. I, I'm not saying you, anything though? bad about that aspect of this movie, you twat. It's so dry. <laughs> it's so dry. It's so tedious. It's I don't like, like the technical stuff. It's like dry, <laughs> tedious. It gets everywhere. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> it's just there was a lot of like just just the technical stuff. I expected more from Lynch on this. That's all. Yeah, you're still wrong. Um, anyway, that's fine. So, I, 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 I love. I, I love, know I'm going to be wrong sometimes on these movies. I mean, I'm the one that picks the movies, but I know I'm sometimes wrong. I liked in the director's cut that Gurney got to say some of his quotes. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like they shall come all for violence. Their face shall so sup as the east wind. They shall gather the captivity of the sands. I like and so then, much about the director's cut. Oh, so it, good. I just, I hated the, the cartoony. Yeah. 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 Because it was, it was basically an animatic. That. Yeah. We need to you see know? the director's cut. And then. it's the first like 10 freaking minutes. It was just this rough. Guy talking. About the Butlerian yeah. Jihad. Yeah. Yeah. As a fan of the books, none of that's in the book. The, the book doesn't open it, with that. It's the book alluded to. I know, it, but doesn't the book get doesn't into open it. with yeah. that. You don't need to know that to pick up the book nope. and read it. 
It's just like you don't need to know that to watch the movie. So much of it was unnecessary. Yeah, I know. I, yeah. I, I agree. However, they got into once we got past that point, I really liked that cut. It was painfully obvious, though, that they uh, the sound hadn't been through its final grading because you'd get that deep, bassy, resonant voice that everyone talks through in the movie Dusty watched. Mm-hmm. And then you'd get people just talking where someone had given it a quick wipe through a board and sent it out as the director's cut because it was, you know, cut. So it was, that was hard to watch. Yeah. Because even on the lines that I recognized, some of it was redone. It obviously wasn't the same take that they used in, in the theatrical release. But at the same time, as yeah, a fan, so I fucking loved too. it. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna have to go back and watch the director's uh, cut then because uh, it's three hours of a movie. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I watch. Keep, it, keep it. Keep it up on the. Do you have? If it's up on the media server, the media keep, server yeah. keep it there. I'll watch it over the next couple of days. Okay. Do you have anything else to say about the movie? Sting's anime hair. Oh my god! Yeah, that is straight nine thousand power level. <laughs> I mean, man, his brother owned him. Oh, acting wise. Oh yeah, um, Raban was. Yes. No, 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 no. That that's how it was supposed to be though. Yeah. Um, he he was supposed to be the intelligent. The beast Raban is a yeah. beast. Mm-hmm. He no, was but, supposed to be the reserved the intelligent, and he did this yeah. this weird thing with his eye. Yeah. Sting did, and I thought he actually did very well for what he was. Oh, yeah, Fade Roth yeah. was an idiot. Yeah, it, but Raban was the intelligent, but you know, uncharismatic one. No, you say no, no, no. You you're went the other. You're ears. incorrect. Switch that. Fade was the smart one. Fade was the fade, fade was the chosen one. Fade yeah. was the you no know, no no. But in the book, no fade. The Baron chose Fade because Fade was beautiful, not because Fade was smart. No, he sent the Beast I, Raban in to soften Arrakis up to give it to Fade. I just re- finished reading the book over the last two days. Ooh, we're talking about the movie Fade <laughs> Sting. <laughs> we warned you we were going to do this. So fade. I'm fine with it. Fade Sting's character is a blithering idiot. And like a complete idiot. Like the when you were introduced to him, he's bored. He doesn't give a shit about the strategy, and the mintat does nothing but like belittle him the whole time. Yeah. But well, he's, he's Raban, supposed to be more. Rabban was a beast, but at least Rabban had you know. You just like the purity, didn't you? <laughs> Rabban is Rabbaning. Leave him alone. You know what? No, I just <laughs> thought, didn't live up to his potential. I just thought that the actor who played Rabban was way better at his character than Sting was at Fade. Oh yeah, yeah. Because the actor, yes, Baron. <laughs> the Raban had facial expression. Mm-hmm. He was that moment where he's eating, and the Baron's telling him, "We're gonna bleed Arrakis mm-hmm. dry." He's just like, "Fuck yeah, we're gonna do that." <laughs> but that look on his face, like, "Yeah, well, what so about this? What My about dick's hard. What it about the so steam good. bath stretch? I mean, that that clinched like the female audience right there. Initially, uh, Sting was supposed to come out completely naked. And it was at the last, like, I like literally I like the victory la- wing underwear. Too. Literally, <laughs> fantastic. Five minutes before they started rolling, they had to make something for him to wear because they didn't want to get censored. So, yeah, initially the plan was for Sting to come out in all his glory. Why didn't the Baron have kids of his own? He likes boys. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I've always, likes- won- I've always wondered about the political structure of that family because the Bene Gesserit wanted to marry. A daughter of Atreides to a son of Harkonnen. But what was the pure line of Harkonnen? Have you read the extended universe stuff from his son? No. Have you read House Harkonnen? I've heard it's not. horrible. It is. Okay. But no, it's not horrible. It's I have not read You'd actually like the, it. It's uh read- it's 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 done in a much more <laughs> modern way. Um in a in a modern writing style that I think you'd like. It is <laughs> a good they are good books, but they are not the genius that Frank Herbert was. Um, and that's never is that more telling. Yeah, I haven't touched any of the non-Frank books. I had to because I wanted to know what happened at the end of uh, Heretics. Okay. okay. And it took buying 10 books. Thanks a lot, Brian Herbert, you prick, <laughs> for you to get around to telling me that. But yeah. And I had to know. It's, I'll, I'll, it's one of I my will, favorite series. I will now read them. I, I could just to. tell you. No, don't. I'll no. turn off the mic and I could tell you. Don't. <laughs> don't read all 10 books. They're not that good. I'm going to. All right. <laughs> I mean, they're not. But Speak, speaking th- of books, you guys want to move on? <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and move on. I, I, but okay. Oh, what, what, what else did you have? What else you got, man? I loved all the subtleties in this. Um, when Jessica is coming in after Paul has been tested with the box, and there is such concern on her face, and her hand is trembling on the doorframe of this beautiful wooden room, which in cold Caladan is the only warm place, and that's where she's torturing Paul. I. 
loved all, every character did amazing facial expressions, amazing just um, uh, body acting with conveying, because the whole movie is trying to convey thoughts and you can't just say it. So they had to show it. And but they then they all do did just some, say it. <laughs> so, it. Sometimes they do, but not nearly enough yeah. to, to get the full story across because we lost people like Dusty here. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And um, I just I, I, I just think everyone did such an amazing job. And I don't understand why this movie isn't universally loved. There's there's one character that every time I saw him in a scene, I kept waiting for him to ask for Ziggy. And that's Dean Stockwell because he played Al in Quantum Leap, the doctor. You know, actors can do other I things. I know, Dustin. but he has the same. In fact, that's what actors do. I know, yeah. but he has the same facial expressions and he has the same cadence no matter what role he plays in. So I kept waiting for him to ask for, for Ziggy. And you can cut that out. I don't out want to end want. on that. <laughs> no, you can cut that out if you want. It, honestly, it sounded a lot better in my head. I like, like, they, they attempted to distill down a lot of the the really thought provoking stuff and make it uh a bit more mass appealing. Mm-hmm. So I like the 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 he who can who he blah, he who controls a thing he who can destroy a thing controls, controls a thing. Yeah. Which is it's it's such a perfect distillation of like 16 paragraphs that Frank Herbert wrote. I honestly think that this movie did a masterful job of taking a very difficult book and making something palatable out of it. Yeah, it clearly did not have the mass appeal, but I agree with you. Yeah. I don't care that it made money. I love it. Hi, everyone. This is your favorite host, Matthew. This week's episode is brought to you by Guardian Games, who we are proud to have as our sponsor. Guardian Games is Portland's largest gaming store. They have almost every game you can think of, be it role-playing, board game, card games, miniature games, even video games. They also have a ton of gaming-related material and some pretty neat swag. I mean, the D20 fuzzy dice that go in your mirror, that's good stuff. If, you, uh, if you're 21, uh, you can have a drink in the back at the Critical Sip. Booze makes gaming better. Always has, always will. There's free games back there. You'll love it. Uh, they also have a friendly and incredibly knowledgeable staff, and they are the hub of a diverse and friendly gaming community. Um, if you're in Portland, you definitely want to go to Guardian Games. Now let's talk some gaming shit. Dusty, tell us about the characters in this movie so we can <laughs> break them down as playable characters if they were in the like Yes, indie game. indeed. Now, there is a large amount of characters, a uh, number of characters in this movie. So we're going to kind of focus on some of the more important ones, in my opinion. So we're going to start, kind of go kind of go all over the place with them, though. Let's just start with the top three. Top three. And then we'll throw one more as we think of them. Okay. All right. Top three. Uh, we will go with uh, obvious Paul Atreides, played by Kyle MacLachlan. MacLachlan. In the context of the movie, Lawful Good. It's yeah. really hard for me to think no, of I, him I, as good. Yeah, I think he's good. He saved the housekeeper. I know, but it's hard because, again, like I mentioned at the beginning, I've got this Urdun in my brain. Oh, right, yeah. And I'm picturing That's why I said of in the of context of, of the movie. All right, Kyle McLaughlin in this movie, as Paul Atreides, neutral good. Protector of his people. Neutral good. Well, why so? He worked for the greater good and not for the greater law. See, I would see that more of his father. We very rarely give people neutral good alignments. I would say that his father would be lawful good, but Paul, again, Paul was out there. Paul was more cosmically aligned than his dad. So he seemed... Okay, I I, I could see that for the second part of the movie. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Okay. I think he was more focused on the cosmic good of mankind than the lawful good of structure and politics. He brought all that shit down. That's not chaotic, but it's definitely not he lawful. did. He did impose a new tyrannical order, but then again, that's not again, the movie. Yeah. I know, right? So it's hard. It's hard to pull my brain out of this Urdu that is from all the books that I've read and from the movies and the shows. Just from this movie, I would say more neutral good than lawful good. I could see that, Dusty. Yeah, I can agree with that. Okay, all right. 
Then we can go into his father, Duke Leto Atreides, that we just talked about. Lawful good, proc now. Yeah. I would say lawful good. Okay. Yeah. He seemed like a generally cool dude. He cared about his people. And when they were doing the survey, flying through the spice, yep. mm-hmm. he was like, oh, show me the spice organization. He yeah, cared more trouble. about saving the men mm-hmm. than he did about saving the the resources. Yeah. yeah. So I would say that's lawful good. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have Lady Jessica, played by Frances- Francesca Annis. Oh, she was amazing. She was... <laughs> uh, that that outboard engine is just Hold on, going. Check. Did I leave my motorcycle running? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um... My Jessica, I think that Jessica's really hot. <laughs> wow, so you did that really well. <laughs> so what you're saying is you have a thing for Jessica's. I I absolutely do. <laughs> so Lady Jessica I absolutely do. <laughs> well I would done. put her somewhere between lawful good and lawful neutral. Um I would go with lawful neutral. Yeah. She is a complex character. She worked against the law she followed to please her duke. So I don't know that lawful is actually her her alignment because she was a Bene Gesserit ordered to bear daughters to the Atreides to seal the Harkonnen breach. Now, she had lived in that order all her life. That was her law. And she broke that. She broke one law. It was a big one. It was, a big was, it was, yeah, it was, it was her big. whole purpose. But then she kept at it. Yeah, she kept back in the. I order. I'm going to say I'm going to say neutral good. I'll go with that. But she also taught Paul the ways, and that wasn't really allowed. Yeah, that's that's yeah. why I can't I can't do yeah. lawful. All right, uh, then your teachings in him. Who else we got? Oh, look, Patrick Stewart, Gurney. Yeah, Gurney. That's what I was going to next. <laughs> Gurney. Yes. Oh, incidentally, Dave, I know you listen to my podcast every now and then on your long drives uh, up from the Eugene area. Every time since I first met you, I've always noted in the back of my mind, huh, Dave's last name is Halleck. <laughs> Just like Gurney. Nice. I would put him at lawful good. Oh, yeah. Gurney is very lawful he good. Is, he is lawful good. Yes. Yeah. yeah. My actual, when when I pictured him in my brain, there's a wrestler, and I can't think of this wrestler's name. He's a modern day pro wrestler, and he dresses as Santa Claus sometimes. Uh, Mick uh, Foley. Mick Foley. Mick Foley. Yeah. When I first read Dune years ago. The character wow. in my brain for Gurney Halleck. Really? I well, Mick Foley wasn't a person that I knew back then. Mm-hmm. But then years later, I saw him on TV, and I was like, "It's Gurney Halleck!" <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Because then I saw the I read the book, and then later I saw the movie. But but still, Patrick Stewart wasn't Gurney in my brain. Eighty five was when this eighty four. Yeah. So I was seven. Yeah. And I saw this movie probably the first time around nine. And I didn't read the books till much later. I saw this in the theaters. So in Topeka. Gurney Kansas. Halleck has always been Patrick Stewart to me. Yeah. I for some reason in my brain, Gurney Halleck was just much bigger and much hairier. <laughs> I always pictured him with a kilt too. If you, and if you it's funny, if you if you watch um Patrick Stewart in this movie, is a because they I think it came out a couple years apart from each other, but is almost a similar, a very same style of character from Excalibur. If you yes. ever watched him, oh he's, yeah, yeah, he's the same style of character from everything. He's, he's ever Patrick done. Stewart. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's very true. Yeah. And then we will move on to Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, played by Kenneth McMillan, the late Kenneth McMillan. Um, he died like four or five years. Yeah, after eighty-eight, this movie came eighty-nine, out. somewhere around in there. I would say lawful evil. I don't know about lawful. Oh, no. I would say chaotic. Even, even, no. even in that, he's trying to get out from under the thumb of his lawfully appointed emperor. But he uses contracts, negotiation, structure, alliances. He uses the law to f- further but just his to his needs. advantage. That's what lawful evil is. No, no, no. But we're talking chaotic about the movie evil. version, not the no, no, book no, no, even no, no. In the book. He's yeah. Okay, that, um, that is the description of what lawful. I'm going evil to say is. that lawful evil is. A dictator, but he doesn't. He doesn't keep his word, and I've always thought that lawful evil would keep his word. No, 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 no. It's a matter of structure, and it is a matter of institutes. He uses political institutions to fund his own need. What about how he dealt with Yui? He didn't deal with Yui. You want to join your wife? He didn't join her, but he didn't. Oh yes, they did. They passed a signal. 
Piter dealt with Yui. Yeah, that under, is under his direction, person. though. Exactly. That, that, that is that is law. You don't you don't do it yourself. You have your structure. I, I could see that, it. but I was going to go with neutral evil as well. New, I could I could possibly do cool. Do, ah, it's tough. <laughs> It's I natural. Feel that we need an alignment lesson. <laughs> I, you know, and I, honest, I honestly think we should do that. One of these, in fact, maybe in one of our bonus episodes, we should read out the alignments. Are we yeah. doing the three five or the five version? Three. I thought three five. I thought we were doing the three five two. I'm doing classic D and D Thackoe alignment area second edition. Well, okay, I'm not doing old school. I've second edition. I, I started with second dead, and second Me dead too. had the nine alignments, and that's yeah. what, how I've been structuring it. Now, I think each edition has changed a little, a little bit. bit about them, but yeah. but basically, you know, lawful evil is the dictator. Yeah, and that's what he is. He no, is the murderous I, dictator. I don't, I don't see him as a dictator. Why he's not? a madman. No, 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 no. If he was a madman, he would just randomly pilot his ship into the sun and kill everybody on it. Because no, 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 fuck no, him. No. That's why. No, he, I mean he's 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 sexually deviant. Um, interested in boning his own nephew. Um, that's personality flaws, <laughs> not I alignment. Don't know, man. I don't know. Um, not alignment. See, I, I I'm, oh, I, again, this is the whole, like, why alignment is stupid in the first place. Yeah. I, like but I said, I, I like alignments. Fun. I like D and D. Like I said, I think he's more chaotic evil. I don't think he's chaotic at all. I, I, I would go happens, as far as I'd go as neutral. Okay. He has um, carefully planned everything. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's not, cause as I understand chaotic evil is a, bit of a madman well the only thing that that does detract and and, and, and that because there are no respect for rules which he does have respect for rules absolute respect for but rules. everything else does Cal- everything Cal- else about him falls into chaotic evil nothing's chaotic about his actions he's even kowtowing to the emperor at the end he well that's reckons, just fear no that, that's respect that is his nephew's he, head is on a paper plate in front of him mm-hmm. he is using alliances politics and vendetta mm. in order to Canley. in order to slowly <laughs> execute a plan. No, I I, I get your argument. I, I'm going to concede this field. I'll I'll, I'll yeah. do it. I just Vader is my lawful evil, and yeah. he doesn't yeah, agree with even that. want to put himself in power. That's He's true. doing it for the Harkonnen family, not for himself. Selflessness yep. doesn't really fall into the law chaos neutrality though. He's do we, well, that depends on how you consider evil as pure selfishness or, or stabbing puppies. But he is clearly arranging things. He is using nefarious ways, but he's doing everything within order. He has already, he doesn't. I'll concede this one. Yeah. You know, no, you're, you're right. I'll concede this one. He is lawful evil. You win. You got it. <laughs> you have convinced me. It's not a battle, but. Yeah. No, it, okay. it, should, it should be, though. I, fact, I should have a standpoint. Only, you should have a standpoint. Reason, I agree with this. The only reason that he even loses is because nobody expects a fucking messiah to appear <laughs> out of nowhere. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Send God. That <laughs> messes up everything. Yeah. Yeah. Then we can go on to Jose Ferrer, uh, the late Jose Ferrer. Yeah. Uh, Padishah, so Emperor good. Shaddam the Fourth. He was um, not really heavily involved. Yeah, but I, I would I would go lawful neutral for him, just just for shits and giggles. Yeah, he he's interested in laws and succession. He doesn't give a shit. Uh, well, I mean, he allied with the Harkonnens legally in order to take out the Atreides. Yeah, he did so. it legally though. All right, then we have Cian Phillips, the Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohiem. Such a small role that I would. I I don't know. I I I, I, th- I think she was a character. Yeah. I would also say lawful good, but differently aligned from our protagonist. Okay. I would say straight up lawful neutral because the Bene Gesserit cared nothing about anything but control. I, I'd have to agree with that one. They yeah. actually cared about the ultimate survival of the human race against the machines. But they ultimately wanted to put one of their own on the throne mm-hmm. just so they could. Who else? Them. The Spacing Guild? The Harkonnen? These Corino fucks? Yeah, I mean they 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 did have the best the best interests of humanity at heart. I'm going to go with lawful good. Final answer. We have a we have just a few more. Uh, then we have Fayed Rathua Ra- Rautha Rautha. Thank you. Fayed played Rautha. played by Sting. Fucking chaotic evil. Yeah. Oh, yeah. completely. Yeah. All right. Then we have Dean Stockwell played Doctor Wellington Yui. That's hard. It's hard. I would say neutral, but he had a flaw. I would say he was lawful good. 
in the in the end from he, beginning and then at the end he was in the placed middle in an yeah. impossible situation and even even then he did his best to do his loyalty as he saw fit as as best he could i could go with that yeah yeah so tragic it, it is a tragic story yeah uh-huh. he was a sturm man uh max von Sydow playing dr Keynes. Kinds. 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 Okay. Kinds. So small of a character in this movie. Yeah. Okay. It's it's hard to not think of him outside of the books. All right. Then we'll move on to Sean Young playing Chani. Uh, Also in this, In the movie, she's just small. And honestly, in the book, small too. Okay. I think we are at the limit. Okay. Um, Everybody else is an NPC then. Yeah. Let me think for a second. No. Stilgar. Stilgar and Piter. Those are the, those are the other two. So we have Brad Dourif playing Piter. <laughs> That's lawful evil lawful right evil. there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I consider lawful yeah, evil. Yeah. I, I lo- oh, I didn't mention it in the movie, but where he's like, where the Baron's yelling at him because he didn't get the ring, and he's like... Oh, and he's flicking his... Yeah, <laughs> his yeah. Yeah. Oh, so good. Well, Brad Dourif is just amazing at yeah. everything he does. Yeah, he, if, uh, if listeners, if you don't know who that is, a few of the movies that he has played in, uh, he has played in Lord of the Rings as Wormtongue. Uh, oh, shit! Yep. That was him. And he ah! was the doctor in Deadwood. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, oh, my God, he was. I love the doctor in Deadwood. He's he, the best. He, oh! he played Billy Bibbit in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Uh-huh. Um, let's see. What else How is he? I not put that I together? I don't know. <laughs> he has the same eyebrows in Deadwood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's done a lot of TV, a lot of, like, Criminal Minds. He's also um, done Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. With those characters out of the way, we've clearly established a bit <laughs> a number of themes of this movie, and that mm-hmm. is political intrigue. Yeah. Yes. This is clearly a very politics driven movie, and as such, you would expect a game to be able to handle that. And I've got some ideas on what we can do. Cool. Mm-hmm. But first, yes. Matthew, Play tell Doom. us about the game, I the campaign idea that you have following in the footsteps of this movie. Okay, so I had two because I did see an ecological engineering game in the back shelf of Guardian Games. So, and it dealt with rivulets and runoff and stuff like that because it is raining for the first time on a desert planet and the entire ecosystem would change. Oh, fuck you, cool, big. <laughs> but that's, that's not what I decided to go for. I decided that um, right after this movie, the, the books pick up almost immediately after, but there is a brief pause where something happens called uh, the jihad. This is actually the second jihad. The first one was against the thinking machines. The second one is the Fremen sweeping out like a fire all over the universe through every inhabited system, uh, through all the old uh, Lansrad and through the, the guild and the Bene Gesserit, bringing everything to heal under what will eventually become the new emperor, which is Paul Maudip. So the PCs in my scenario would play as Fremen uh, under the command of the redoubtable Gurney Halleck, which means the I DM like gets to be Gurney. Nice. Uh, their job is to spread the Jihad of Ma'adib across every planet of the Lanzrad and bring the Guild and Bene Gesserit under Ma'adib's control. But that's, that's the end game. What Paul must immediately do right after this movie is cement his win. And in order to become an emperor, what does he have to do? Anybody? Dusty? Um, shag his new wife. He has to shag his new wife, the beauteous daughter of the emperor. Did I get it right? Yeah. Oh, wait, really? <laughs> the, the, the princess of Rulin. Uh, now, Shaddam still has forces loyal to him and will seek to retain his power through spies, through assassination. He can't openly work against Paul, but there can be a lot that happens behind the scenes because Paul has him literally under his, his control, under his thumb at this moment. They're in the same room. He's got all the guns and knives. Emperor's got no Sadakar left, like maybe 20 of them. Not just that. Sandworms. He's the god, he's, essentially. Well, no, yeah. no, no. He's the messiah. Not just, no. He's He's got the... His son's the, the god. Prescience. Read the books, damn it. He's got the prescience. <laughs> yeah. Like the complete prescience. Now that he's had the water of life, he sees and knows everything. Yeah. So yeah. what the PCs will start out doing uh, under the control of Gurney and uh, Thufir is eliminate the emperor's options and leave him helpless before Paul. Actually, if you think about it, he is a mm-hmm. god at least at this moment in time, because of the three tenets of godhood. He's got omniscience, clearly. That's what his power is. He's got uh, omnipresence in the form of Fremen everywhere. 
And now he's got omnipotence because he controls the spice. Tell to Google. He's a god. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Those are the... That, yes, yes, yep. you're right. Sorry. That's all right. I'll just start again. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the PCs must eliminate the emperor's options, basically. They, they have to nail him down so that he's in a position where he has to accept Paul becoming the new emperor through marriage mm-hmm. to his daughter. Now, the emperor has something to gain from this, and so does Paul. Uh, Paul's son would be the emperor. It would take the Cor- the Corino, mm-hmm. Coronado, one of those. Okay. Uh, I think it's Corino, off the seat and replace it into a distaff uh, side of the ruling family. And the Atreides would become the new ruling name. Provided Paul kept the name. Yes, yes. Yeah. Which he does. It doesn't stop there. There are all the worlds of the Lansrod to subjugate, Bene Gesserit schemes to foil, and the vital service of the guild to co-opt. It could be a very long campaign, but how it starts... Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. ...is in the palace on Arrakis, the old Harkonnen palace, with a battle of the spies, with a battle of assassins, in order to take out the Emperor's allies. Because the Spacing Guild wants the Emperor. The Bene Gesserit want the Emperor. Paul, and through his minions, has to force this issue. He has to make this marriage happen. So I call this one Wedding Bells. And we're going to do it with murder, (laughs) fire, and blood. As Fremen. As Fremen do. Fremen trained with the weirding modules of the movie. Yeah. Because we're going with the movie fiction. Right on. Yeah. Um, now you can take this. That's just the first mission. That's that's the first part. Uh, a DM that's that's read the books knows exactly where to go from there. Mm-hmm. They first have to kick. I forget. It was an ally of the Harkonnens who took over. Oh, oh, um, oh, 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 Don't spoil any more for people who, like Dusty, have not read all the books. It's okay. You can spoil it. It's totally okay. Because no, I you. might. My. All right, all right, all right. My. Physical stack of books is very high, along with my digital stack. Just so. throw them in the garbage and read Dune like a proper human being. Exactly. <laughs> do you agree. want me to read Dune or do you want me to read Master and Commander? Because read Dune. Dune. As if you had to ask. <laughs> <laughs> read Dune. <laughs> Master and Commander is great, but it's it's niche. Yeah, yeah read Dune, man. Okay. Read Dune. All right. So, Besides, that's that's six books versus twenty one. So yeah, with, read, read Dune. With first. a setup like that, Matthew, you don't even need to know the books because ultimately, when you're going to run a game. To run the best game possible for as many players as possible who may or may not already be fans of a franchise, you need to be willing to take creative. Oh, license. true. But you have to take back Caladan and the, the Imperial Planet. That's all yeah. I'm doing. Because it's, it's the same with Star Wars. Like if you want to run a Star Wars game in a licensed era of Star yeah. Wars, you really need to just, as a GM, throw cannon just, out the window, just pull the stops, throw the cannon out the window and... Except the fact that your players are going to fuck shit up in ways that may prevent the entire rest of the movies from happening. <laughs> yeah. No, that that's okay. But in this particular scenario, they're actually supposed to go out into the universe and fuck shit up. Uh, this is not actually necessarily a good aligned area. The Fremen come as conquerors with sword and fire and beat the worlds of the Imperium into submission. That's what happens during this time. I have several amazing games for this. Yeah, you could almost do Warhammer for this shit. All right, so we have established themes. We have Mm -hmm. political intrigue, Mm -hmm. and we have religious jihad. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we need a game. We need games that can support the shifting of perspectives. In Dune, you're not a party. Dune is played on the grand scheme. The player characters in Dune are not... even friends like they are all pulled out back they they have troops they have machinations in play we can sit together it's almost like playing a board game i was gonna say i'd like to play dune as risk oh that would be great yeah but but let's do it as an rpg there are rpgs that can handle this that can handle multiple people at the table playing a game with a game master with or without a game master, but usually with, where you're playing a role-playing game. Each person at the table is also playing uh, some kind of political faction and controlling aspects of that faction, and it's beautiful. It is beautiful uh-huh. to behold. Oddly enough, this I have more games for this theme than any <laughs> movie we've done so far. 
So the first game that I want to talk about, <laughs> is, I'm going to start from the games. Oh, my God. They're all so good. I don't know which. Oh, God, this is tough. <laughs> I'm going to tell a game. Point out story. their merits. We'll, we'll talk about it. God, the order that I'm going to do this in is insane. So I'm just going to start, okay. Matthew, with the story that you've put forth. There's a game called Burning Wheel. Burning Wheel is this strange mix of indie and traditional role playing games. It is crunchy as fuck. And when you look <laughs> at the books, the way the books are layered out, you might try to read it and think, I can't even understand what this game is about. Right. Because I don't think the books do a good job of explaining the game. But Burning Wheel has its fanatics. And if you let one of those fanatics teach you how to play, you're going to have an amazing gaming experience because Burning Wheel is a role-playing game, traditional role-playing game, where you make a character whose entire purpose in playing is to fight for what they believe in. Uh-huh. One of the main things about Burning Wheel is creating a character who has something they believe in and needs to push that belief. Now, Burning Wheel itself is Tolkienian fantasy at its root, but there is a number of offshoots of Burning Wheel, one of which we talked about in 13 Assassins called The Blossoms Are Falling. And I don't recall. But the yeah, one I, I want to talk about today is a really hard to find because it's been out of print for a long time. I have a copy. It's simply not here. I was looking for it. I think I loaned it out and I regret that decision. Whoever it is, return it. <laughs> it is called Jihad Burning Sands. It is Dune. In Burning Wheel. They have filed off all the serial numbers. Moved it across it, state lines. It is a role-playing game about a space desert planet with its resident people who are now in power who have to conquer the conquerors. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I know that sounds gonna, like Dune. There's going to be some Burning Wheel fanatics that are going to correct me on that. But Jihad, I don't know the story behind it. I'm not an expert. And this Burning is a Wheel. more of a traditional... Like so, dice, a little bit about the way sheets. Burning Wheel works is when you make a character, you follow what's called a life path system. So you set down, you've got this idea for a character, and you you decide, okay, first I'm going to pick the life path my, of my character as a child. I'm going to define their childhood. They were an urchin. Okay, where did they go from being an urchin? I think they went to being a pickpocket. And each time you pick a life path, you write down all the skills that you get and the way it affects your stats. Okay, from a pickpocket, I think they went to being a coin clipper. Okay, now I get all these things. All right, but then I think something happened, and they got wrapped up in la revolution, <laughs> and they became a freedom fighter. All right, that's the fourth life, fourth step in the life path there. That's a standard starting character. Right. Mm -hmm. But we're going to make this person... A little bit more interesting. We're going to give them the fifth life path of uh, Raider. They went from being a freedom fighter to being an outward Raider. So now we have given them five life paths. And that has built up a list of skills and options and choices that I get to make. Making a Burning Wheel character takes hours, if not days. Oh, fun. Because you can either make it yourself or better if you make it with a group. You Honestly, as a detail-oriented player who really agonizes over these things... That sounds like great fun to me. Burning Wheel is the kind of game where you have what are called beliefs and instincts. And your beliefs are statements of power, of belief. I must do this thing at, and then I will give, then I will control the universe is a belief. Mm -hmm. And if you can tag a belief, you get bonus points, mm -hmm. essentially. Okay. But then you also have what are called instincts, and there's a number of different ways to interpret instincts, but the basic way is think of an instinct as a pre-programmed action that I just get for free, one of which could be when startled to draw my gun. Right. Or okay. always sleep with one eye open. I know all the exits to every room. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're building a character that's a, that's a competent character, like a very competent with those things. Another one is always have, always pet. A dog could be an instinct. Right. It, it's basically a pre-programmed set of things that you get to say always happen. So one one could say, I always have a lockpick in my boot. Yeah. And so, okay. I always cool. have an extra gun. 
your group yeah. is your group is trapped. You're drawn down into the prison, and you look, in, to, look to the GM and say, "Okay, I picked the lock." And the GM's like, "How do you do that?" And you point at your character sheet, and the instinct says, "I always have a lock pick in my boot." And the GM's like, "Fuck you, buddy! You pick the lock." <laughs> <laughs> I like that. All right, cool. So, Burning Wheel has a Dune esque setting called Jihad: The Burning Sands. It's basically impossible to find now, but it is Dune. It is exactly the game that you just described. That sounds like a game I want to play. The next game that I want to talk about is called Meta Barons. Meta Barons is based on a comic series called sure. The Meta Baron. Oh, yeah. Didn't, we've mentioned this before, right? We have. Yeah, and also it's Jodorowsky also. It also. is. We mentioned this when we talked about Fifth Element and when we talked about mm-hmm. Valerian. The Meta Barons has so many analogs to dune it's not funny it's got the 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 big old galactic empire uh, the one of the main differences between meta barons and dune of course is the high tech and meta barons but if you just flip through the book right now as you are mm-hmm. you can see there's so many oh, different yeah. ways just the art mm-hmm. screams I could see Dune being done in this. Very much so. It's beautiful art, too. So much that it has a witch-like coven called the Shabda'ud, which are the oh, mini Jesuit. Yeah. That's how they do the powers. The yeah, meta- it it, it kind of looks like a lot of this art look, looks like it was leftovers from Jodorowsky's and, and just put into, into a game, right? which I'm totally yeah. cool with. This book is almost word for word. The West End Games. Look, look at that. See? Yeah, mm-hmm. this is Gurney Howick. This is it's totally... I don't, that is totally, I don't totally see, Gurney. I don't see the wheel. This book is almost word for word the West End Games Star Wars role-playing game. Oh, that's cool. They all literally right. took this book, removed all the Star Wars references, replaced them with Meta Baron's references, and printed this. See, I, I, love the, I love the West End Games, like series uh, when is, they did star wars it was it's, it is my favorite two days this is mechanically identical to that game okay to the point that it is the same book cool what's that i've run a that's meta a Baron's repair game. robot no. yeah i've run a meta i have run a meta baron's game before it was very good if you like the d6 system and you want to do something dune-esque yeah i do like the meta the baron's D6 system even the character yeah, sheets, yeah that's what i was looking for the, beautiful the templates are beautiful but they they very, they do look like the, just yeah. the standard West End Games D6 templates. Yeah. Okay. Now, now, where's your big boy? No, this isn't even the big boy. But you have that, that smile but on your face. But it is the big boy. All right, this what is, you got? This You're going to like thir- this. This is only the third. Oh, it's in plastic. That is <gasps> Chronicles, Chronicles of, of the, the Imperium. Imperium. Yeah, let's just play this. <laughs> no, it's actually not a good game. <laughs> it's just not. Why? It, it, it follows the lore very closely, but mechanically it's frustrating and boring. It wasn't play tested well, and it is clear why once you start to read it. This game, I think, was released as a limited edition in 2000, the same year that D20 was released mm-hmm. at Gen Con. Yeah. Oh, but it's all there. This mint condition, pristine model is loaned to Can I open us. it? Oh, yeah. Who, who loaned us. it to us? Who, who do we Hazel? need to give thanks? Scott Hazel. Thank the, you, Scott. Uh, thank you, Scott. buddy from the last couple, from a previous two episodes or so. He was with us on Three Musketeers. Mm-hmm. And, Forward uh, by Brian Herbert. Shut yeah. the fuck up, Brian <laughs> Herbert. <laughs> Stop it's, humping your daddy's thing and get your own ideas. It is a beautiful book, and it is ridiculously expensive. All right. Yeah, I remember I, Scott talking about this during our last session. So it looks really nice. Diet terrible purpose dark secret oh if you By want Zinti lore Corporation. it has lore it has great lore in the book it's the game maybe like this that. is one of those where you just cut out the bad stuff like the game yeah no i mean take all the lore and then just uh toss and then just toss like a, a d20 at it <laughs> yeah you don't need draw recover weapon hand switch regain foot no 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 oh, but, oh. oh i love the art it's it's got that like late seventies uh pulp uh cover art mm-hmm. in it. That's just fantastic. That's gorgeous. It is okay, a, okay. Here's a problem I had with the movie Dusty. The that is an ornithopter. Yeah. It flaps its wings. Yeah, the the movie did not do the ornithopters properly. It did not. No. Triangle box thing. Oh, this is beautiful. Let's just play this. This works. We can make this work. I can make this work. I, I, this I'll is, run it. This is not the choice <laughs> that I would make. And the reason I do not want to promote it is not because it's a terrible game. It's just not 
satisfying. However, but it has all the houses. It's it has really all the stuff. impossible to come across. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess there's that, huh? Drive through? No, really. All right, I'm going to put this back in plastic. I don't want to. I, th- I think they lost the license. Oh wow! So it's this is a game that is basically lost to time. Hmm. It is a relic, <laughs> a relic of a bygone era. Yeah. Well, thanks for learning that, Scott. That's yeah. Thank you, Scott. Scott. Gorgeous. So the game that I there's two games that I want to talk about hand in hand. One is called Fading Suns. I had a copy and. I cannot for the life of me find it. I scoured my house for it. And what will happen is that right after we're done, you'll find it. It'll I'm going to find it. Fading Suns. Oh, I've seen that. It's yeah. a big fucking purple book. It has a jump gate on the cover. Fading Suns was done by Holistic Designs. It has a number of people involved in it who are ex-White Wolf people. Ooh. And in many ways, when you look through the book, it kind of reads like a White Wolf game. Uh-huh. Fading Suns is one of my favorite games ever. Nobles, priests, aliens, knights. It is the dawn of the sixth millennium and the skies are darkening for the suns themselves are fading. Humans reached across the stars long ago, building a republic of high technology and universal emancipation, and then squandered it, fought over it, and finally lost it. A new dark age has descended on humanity for the greatest of civilizations has fallen and even the stars die. Now feudal lords rule the known worlds, vying for power with fanatic priests and scheming spacing guilds. Starships, psychics, lost worlds, and ancient artifacts. Fading Suns, second edition. It may not 100% sound like it. Fading Suns is something of a kitchen sink fantasy. It is like 90% Dune. Yeah. The reason I promote Fading Suns is, first off, of the games that we've mentioned so far, it's the only one that's still in print. There, that <laughs> helps. Yeah. And it is... Okay, let me explain Fading Suns to you real quick. Do it. All right. You have... There was, an, there was a great galactic republic, and then there were wars, and the republic fell. Now there's a galactic empire, and that empire is crumbling because... You know, uh, signs are rising up that that the stars are dying and the last hope of humanity is out there and Mm -hmm. whatever, blah, blah, blah. But the thing about Fading Suns is your characters fall between a handful of different factions. You can be a character from a noble house in space. You can be a a character from the church, which, you know, the Bene Gesserit, whatever. Mm -hmm. You can be a character from one of the spacing guilds, the guild. Or you can be uh, a character of a free man, Fremen type. Right. Those are the characters that you get to play in this game. You build a coterie, essentially, and follow them through the stars and see what happens. All technology is prescribed by the church. That's accurate. Only a handful of guilds still have the secrets of science that they guard jealously with with patents that they will murder entire planets for. Whereas you have these noble houses that maintain this vestigial power and you're not quite sure how they truly hold on to it. And then there's this three way balance of power in the galaxy. The reason I would do it with Dune is because I've done it with Dune. I have taken the Dune power struggle, put it in the fading sun system and it translates perfectly nice you have one of the uh one of the houses of the church is called the eschatonic order and the eschatonic order has magic that is 100 percent bene gesserit so you take that bam you have the bene gesserit now you have all the noble houses all right well the noble houses almost translate perfectly you have house hawkwood which mm-hmm. is house atreides you have house decados which translates to uh house harkonnen you've got the uh a few other houses, but who fucking cares about them? There's only really two houses that we need to give a shit about. And then, of course, you've got the fucking spacing guild. I mean, right. it's right there. <laughs> it's and finally you have the the space barbarians. Of course, you can relate them. But then you have the freemen. Boom, done. Right. However, I wouldn't use the Fading Suns game system. I'm going to make this more complex. Okay. okay. What would you use? I would use the Song of Ice and Fire role-playing game. Really? 
<laughs> <laughs> oh, Matthew, just he just every his whole I world just, a little. Bit. Yeah, completely. Now, you hold on, you went right. limp. <laughs> I'm not talking about your proposed campaign. I'm talking about if we were to play Dune the movie as a game, I would use the Song of Ice and House and yeah, the Song <laughs> of Ice and Fire role playing game because a Song of Ice and Fire game. The first thing you do before you even make characters is you design your house. Yeah. You design your house. You give it holdings. You give it a motto. You give it a flag. You give it troops. You give it a purpose. And then you set it forth upon the world. I've run the Song of Ice and Fire game to play Fading Suns. And it's beautiful. All you got to do is take all of the scale. Because the Song of Ice and Fire is clearly written for Westeros. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Just multiply that times a million, and you have the stars. <laughs> right. All right. That's it. See that? Okay. Just pull the scope so just out. through character creation, though. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, so your your holdings are. Like, you, you God start, damn it, Martin! Haven't you done enough? <laughs> <laughs> you start the game. You build a house. Your house. Okay. Your house has. I, I have a castle and I have a farm. Okay. Let's pull that back. I have a, a planet a, and a moon. I have a battle, yeah, a planet, or I have a Death Star, and and I have uh, an agricultural planet or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. All you just got to do is pull the scope out, and it works perfectly. I Sounds even have good. rules online if anybody wishes to see them. <laughs> okay, uh, I actually, drop that. Yeah, yeah, that sounds okay. I, I went a little suspicious there. Now the reason I'm going it. with this is <laughs> in Song of Ice and Fire, in the role playing game, you build a house frequently when you play it your story is the fall of that house <laughs> yeah um that's an, actually an interesting perspective another way to play this which i didn't consider uh earlier today would be every player takes a house of the landsrad and tries to survive the fremen there is rules for that <laughs> yeah that might actually be a better way to go yeah. now that i'm thinking about it it's like uh, you would play like House Carino, mm-hmm. and I would play uh, uh, the uh, Artificers of Ix, and you know you would play something else. I, that might be interesting too. Like you could deal with each other, try and like sabotage each other, Greg, jockey position for power. Greg Stoles has a game out there called Rain R E I G N, and that's I think I've seen that. Yeah, where you play. I think each player at the table plays a house. Yeah. And I think they could pull it off. I'm yeah. not the best person to talk about it because I never had a chance. To I want to play both ways, though. I want to be the I want to be the avenging horde, and I want to stand off the avenging horde. Anyways, where I'm going with Song of Ice and Fire is that it is a traditional game underneath the house layer. You as a group play a house of characters, but you also play individual characters, right? Mm-hmm. So you focus on your individual adventures, and then every month of story time, you pull back and you roll for the fortunes of the household any investments that you've made, any glory that you've invested. With Dune, it's really simple. You start the game. You make House Atreides. You define the character. You develop the characters of House Atreides. You have mm-hmm. Gurney. You have Paul. You have, what, Thufur. And you have uh, Jessica. And then you... That's a, that's a great group. You have the, the Lord's son. Yep. You have his advisor. You have the, the, the consort mother. And you have the general. Right there. Bam. That's, that is that's, a, your, that's your group. That is a classic Song of Ice and Fire adventure or group. And now you have House Atreides with a classic group. Okay. Two sessions in. The house is in chaos. Mm-hmm. Everything's <laughs> a flame and you're separated. Okay. Yeah. Eight sessions in. Now we conquer the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. I, yeah. I, I could roll with that easily. <clears throat> Though I have to say Meta Barons looked really interesting too. They're all good. And except, you know what? Except for the Dune one. The Dune one, the is, Dune one's pretty. Al- it's almost unplayable. Keep that but it for is lore. A beautiful game. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Okay. Right. So it was Dune and all of them. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many choices. G- g- give a conglomeration. Okay, it depends. For your I li- game, I-, I like Meta Barons. Let's let's not go for my game. Let's say we we're just doing the movie. My hook is separate. If I were just doing the movie, I would do Song of Ice and Fire. For your hook, I I would go with Meta Barons. For your hook, that would go with Jihad Burning Sands. Okay. Yeah. But Jihad Burning Sands is a lot more difficult to get than Meta Barons. I looked both on eBay and Amazon, and they don't even understand what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't exist to them. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. I personally, I don't know how I'd do this. I think I would take your route with 
uh, with the George R. R. Martin game. The Song oh, of Ice another and Fire. cool thing about the combat system of the Song of Ice and Fire game is that death isn't always on the table. Like when you fight someone and when you defeat someone in combat, you don't have to kill them. So even though you've done all of this damage to this person, damage doesn't mean death. Damage means defeat. And then right. at defeat, you get to choose. I kill them. I take them a rant, take them as a hostage, or I gain something from their family. It's like... Or you can just keep poking them with a sword. Politics is built into every aspect of the system. Yeah, that sounds like the one. That's the winner. Cool. It's, it's pretty fun. Yeah. One of your stats is status. Right. Mm. Like you have, do you lose status after a defeat? You can, yeah. but you, you have to put point as if it was, as if it was a skill, as if it was any other ability in the game, you have to put points and status and there's a minimum that you have to put in based on your birth rank. Right. Hmm. Paul would have a shitload of status. Yeah. He would right. start the game. Like, in fact, if you want, you know, in the movie, he's actually not that capable he's an okay well, not fighter only that, but i mean yeah. atreides is not a big house they're just respected they don't have high mm -hmm. status so i think it could work yeah i'd be interested to play that yeah it sounds good i'm i'd be game for it fantastic well if we ever get to play it that's what i'm going to try and run <laughs> all right cool all right so uh this is have movies will game i was matthew and i'm dusty and i'm nathaniel it's and like, this was our favorite movie ever yeah <laughs> <laughs> Your guys is, you know, it was the favorite movie of the people who have taste. <laughs> I'm sorry. We'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for listening to another episode of our show. We're still pretty new to the scene and we'd love to get your feedback. If you like what you hear, please leave us a review on iTunes with your thoughts. Good or bad, they really help us get the word out. If you want to say hello... Drop us a line on all of the usual social media sites. You can find the links right there in the show notes. You can also leave us a comment on our website at havemovieswillgame.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Have Movies Will Game is a Breakfast Puppies podcast production, and our episodes are distributed under CCBYND 4.0 license. Our opening theme is Rock and Gravel by Sid Valentine's Patent Leather Kids, with introductory narration provided by Isaac Scher. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. Crunch off. Oh, God, I can hear it. <laughs> Put on your headphones. Hey, guys, we're adults over 30. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> Hurry up. <laughs> right, I'm getting the last. <laughs> I want to hear the playback though. So bad. <laughs> <laughs>